Welcome to The Barbara Show, our very first English episode. First of all, I would like to thank you for your support. Thank you for following us on YouTube, following us on Instagram. Thank you for your support on Facebook. Thank you for following The Barbara Show, the Kinyarwanda version, every Sunday at 7.30 on Isibo TV. We'll be throwing in an English episode once in a while, and this is our very first English episode. I am excited. I am excited. So, today... Uh, I have been thinking about something related to our East African community. I tuned in one day. I was thinking, I was just, you know, searching for a radio to listen to. And then I fall on this golden voice. And I'm like, is this in Rwanda? So I'm thinking, is this the BBC? Is this, I mean, what are we, what are we listening to? Then I listen to her and she says, Royal FM, Kigali in the morning, Royal FM. I'm like, this voice? on a radio in Rwanda, this is amazing. So I got to get to know more about her and I discovered that her name is Jackie Lumbasi. My name is Jackie, thank you so much for having kept us company. We will see you online, the hashtag is Kigali in the morning. God bless you abundantly. Jackie Lumbasi is a radio presenter for the Royal FM here in Kigali. She hosts Kigali in the morning from Monday to Friday, 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. You might have caught her. I mean, I, I, I love her voice in the morning. It just gets me up. It's a, it's a show that is fun-packed, that is informative, and it feels, it feels fresh. So in line with what the Barbara Show covers, since we cover information, we cover inspiration, we cover motivation, we use personal examples to inspire lives, I thought of inviting Jackie. Oh, well, she has invited me because we're sitting in the studio of Royal <laughs> FM where she was working from. But I thought of hosting her on the Barbara Show so that we get to hear how did she come? How is she tapping in? the opportunities and resources we have in Rwanda. What does this look like? So we are here with Jackie to walk us through how she got in this in Kigali. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. Thank it's, you, Barbara. It's Thank such a pleasure. Much. Such a pleasure being on your show. And how did you even think of having <laughs> me for your first I, English episode? The East Africa. Who am I? You, you, no, you told me, um, call me the East African. Oh, yes. Don't call so me the Kevin, first the English show will host the East African woman. Oh, my goodness. I'm so humbled. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you Thank so you. much. So, Jackie, Thank you for me. Yes. how did you get in the media? Oh, boy. How did I get into the media? It was in... Um, a long time ago, when I was, I had just finished my senior four, form four, mm -hmm. and I was looking around for what to do. Mm -hmm. I remembered I had, I had been told by my teachers, both in primary and secondary school, mm -hmm. that I had a very good voice. Mm -hmm. They kept telling me some, And it didn't hit me because the people, it's, it's a family voice. Like the oh. women in my family all sound like I do. Oh. The men all sound like I do. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so there was nothing unique about it. Yes. Of, for me, yes. but for people that spoke to me, those uh -huh. that interacted with me from way back, mm -hmm. primary, secondary, they always say there's something unique about your voice. And that's mm -hmm. what media, radio especially is about. It's about so the voice. I think it, it planted a seed in me mm -hmm. and I fell in love with it. Mm -hmm. I, I found myself thinking about it. You know, you say something to a child and mm -hmm. they just start thinking and thinking. So mm -hmm. when I was done with my Form 4, I knew I wanted to do either cosmetology and beauty or... Um, media because mm -hmm. i loved watching news and mm -hmm. i loved how those women especially the women they mm -hmm. would be composed or smart <clears throat> and beautiful and confident mm -hmm. so i wanted to be one of them mm -hmm. and when i was when i did my form 4 did not pass very well to go to university on a government uh, sponsorship my parents couldn't afford to send me to school at that to college at that time mm -hmm. so there was a little bit of a lull for several years i was at home before joining college mm -hmm. then one day i just happened to my, my dad happened to meet someone who had a college in uganda mm -hmm. where they were teaching people mass communication in kenya the course was being offered mm -hmm. at kimc but mm -hmm. it was quite expensive mm -hmm. so that was totally out of our league mm -hmm. but it's still something i wanted to pursue so when my dad met this guy who gave him flyers of that a, a flyer about that school we did the conversion it was something that he could struggle mm -hmm. to manage mm -hmm. and that's how i went to school i did my diploma in mass communication went through it. I did two years of the diploma. Then one day when I'd gone back to pick my letter, mm -hmm. a letter to go ask for space as an intern mm -hmm. at the state media, mm -hmm. I said hi to someone at the reception. 
how are you doing? I love to say hi to people. So, <laughs> you love to say hi to people? I, very, very much. Yes. So I say hi to him and he's in awe. He's like, oh, you have a very good voice. I'm like, oh, thank you very much. Have you ever worked on radio? Have you thought of it? I was like, yes, thinking, yes, I, had, I have thought of it. In fact, I've just come to pick my papers. I'm going to ask for internship. He says, no, you're not going to ask for internship. There's a radio looking for a new zanka. He says, come. I'm, wait, I'm like, I'm looking at this man because there are other people around the reception area. I walked in with a friend of mine, but now all his attention is on me. He's just met me. Then he's called Osbert. I'll never forget that gentleman. Then he says, um, I'm taking you somewhere now. I'm like, look at me. I was just like a girl who moved from some ghetto somewhere. I, want, <laughs> I come to pick papers, which I will drop tomorrow. I wasn't dressed for that. So he says, no, 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 we're going to do that. So we jump onto a bike. He takes me to a radio station, Power FM, you know, which was under Kampala Pentecostal <coughs> Church. Mm -hmm. And that is how the journey started. So I get there and I get hired as a news anchor and receptionist. Just if like that. Me how I joined the media. So it was preceded by me studying for it, loving it, studying for it. And then I meet this stranger who tells me there's a radio looking. And that's how I ended up getting the job. Just like that. Just like that. Wow. Okay. So you start working in the media. Yes. I mean, you've been in the media for more than 15 years. I've been years. in the media. Yes. In fact, that time I'm telling you about, that was, uh, was it 2004? Wow. Yeah. Quite a long time ago. You've I've been in the media since 2004. Wow. How many years I failed mathematics? Who's going to help us calculate? Co 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 <laughs> communicators don't do math. They don't no. do math, exactly. No, no, We no, do no. words. We do words and talking. That, Thank that, you. That's how I like to think about it. You know it. these things. Yeah. So you go into yeah. the media and it requires a lot to yes. stay in the media. It's, I love it. This yeah. is, I mean, I'm passionate about it. Exactly. But it requires a lot to stay in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. What has it taken you to stay in the media? So I think first and foremost, the love for it. You got that right. I'm telling you, the love for it. Because, and as I'm giving you that history where it started by me watching people mm -hmm. and, you know, just admiring them and then talking mm -hmm. when my teacher started telling me this. So I, the love for it grew. With time, With as you time. were working. Exactly. Yes. So it got to a point where all I needed was an opportunity. And when I got this job as a news anchor, I told myself silently, I am going to stay. Like, I'm not coming into this industry just to give it a try. I I'm love going that. to stay. I love that. And you stay by working hard. So yeah. trust me, from the word go, I, you gave worked, it your all. I gave it my all. The only reason I have, like today for me, it's not a job. It's not strenuous. I have been waking up since then because even, even as an anchor, I would start early. I have been doing this for almost 20 years, but same schedule. I never tire of it. Because it's you love it. Because I love it so much. It's, it's ministry for me. It's a calling. Mm -hmm. It's not a job. So trust me, if you ask me what has kept me, it's just that. And then, you know, the, the once in a while when you meet someone and there's something you said mm -hmm. that impacted their life. And so this is somebody that's telling you, oh, you know, and I, probably this is very important for me to highlight. I remember as I was going with this, no, after, after going with this guy and getting introduced to the news editor, when I went back home, I prayed. And I said, God, you want to give me that job. I want to join the media, not to be famous, but to glorify your name. Amen to that. I asked for it. Amen to that. And trust me, I have seen it manifest. Amen to so that. So when I meet someone and all the energy, whatever, it's just by God's grace. When I meet someone and they say, that message you shared, it changed my life. It helped me stay in this relationship. It helped me stay in this workplace. Mm -hmm. I say, that is just God using me because he put me in this place to use me. There is something that you've just said that we, we tend to think that if we're going to do business or if it's a career, it has to be something massive, but it can just be your voice. Exactly. It can just be your it voice that takes voice. you places. Yes. It can just be how you paint or it's just something small that you need to pay attention to. Thank you. Because we're all gifted differently. Yes. I don't have a PhD and I will, might, might never get it, <laughs> but I am at a place where yes. it requires excellence. As and you're giving excellence. You understand? And yes. let me tell you, I did that even as a receptionist. I wanted to excel even as a receptionist. So somebody would walk in. As I am going to work in the morning, I'm telling myself, I am the face of this organization. I love So that. whoever walks in will have to love me, then they'll have to come back. It's a radio station, so I would give them the biggest, widest smile. 
I would welcome them. Find out how are you doing. I, and remember, I am at the reception while attending to this guest. I am preparing my bulletin. I am preparing it. At some point, I had I, I introduced a Kiswahili bulletin. So somebody will walk in. I am translating from English to Kiswahili. Doing this, but I'll pay attention to their need. I will call the person they have come to see. And I did that for four years. In those four years, the last year, the fourth year, I joined TV as an anchor. <laughs> wow. It, it's been listen, an interesting listen, journey. It's been an interesting journey. And a journey with no end. Like, it's got opportunities. Mm -hmm. A lot of opportunities. So it was up to me to see those opportunities and go for them. Like you I came to writing. Rwanda. Oh, you see? Uh -huh. <laughs> you saw opportunities. I saw how, opportunities, exactly. How did you come to Rwanda, Jackie? Talk, oh, to, talk to us about, about it. it. How <laughs> did you come to Rwanda? I mean... <laughs> Okay. So you see, I because you you were and remember news anchoring is not the only thing I did. So I <laughs> I remember when I felt like I had mastered news anchoring because there's the reporter who will go to the field, there's a news editor who will mm. prepare the bulletin, uh, the the stories, then I will proofread. So I felt like I had really mastered it. There was nothing new there. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, well, let me go to TV. Went to TV. Even that had its own time because I did eight years as a TV anchor. Even that I mastered. I left. But so. When I felt like, oh, enough of this anchoring, <clears throat> I approached a program director and asked to be a presenter. Mm -hmm. He started by giving me a weekend show. And as I told you, and this person who says, all I need is one leg in. Mm, I like that mindset. That's it. Like, just I need to one. get my I may not be the in, most intelligent. Though. Thank you. Like, I may not be the most intelligent person in the world. <laughs> just give me one, one leg in. So I went in. Yes. He told me, you're going to do our Saturday breakfast show. <laughs> Within six months. I was on their biggest show. Look at that. <laughs> Look at oh, that. Oh, that was Grace. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Like yes. somebody thinks I am bragging. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> but seriously. But it was, yeah, so I did that show for 10 years. Wow. That breakfast show for 10 years. It was the biggest breakfast show in Uganda. Biggest. So 10 years. And there's a friend of mine who lives in Kigali. He was a big fan. Remember, we don't have English shows here. Yes. But we have a lot of English speakers. Yes. So what they would do is tune to radios in Kenya, radios in Uganda for different content. I discovered the magnitude of that after arriving. Uh -huh. That's when I realized, eh, it's so, I think, when I thought I was just talking to the people in like a small trading center, mm -hmm. I had listeners even in Kigali. So it dawned on me after arriving here. So those people used to tune in and one of them was a friend of mine who worked here. Mm -hmm. So you have a friend in Kigali who tells you, Jackie, think yep. about Kigali. Exactly. But you know, surprisingly, before he told me to think about it, he contacted me asking for male presenters. He was interested in male presenters. And that was six months before he told me there was now room for me. Mm -hmm. So I give him a few friends of mine. He wanted male, could speak English. Then I told him, as I was, I was saying goodbye, I said, if ever there's an opportunity for a female radio host, please do not bypass me. I said it. You know, some of these things, just throw it out there. You never just know. Just say it. Just say it. So I left it. And then a few months on, if I'm not wrong, it was six months on, on a Tuesday. Tuesday is my favorite day. So uh, Yeah, I saw you say that on, yeah. on Instagram, that you love Tuesday. I Miracles Tuesday. happen on Tuesday. Miracles happen on so Tuesday. This miracle happened on Tuesday. It happened on Tuesday. I wow. pray best on Tuesday. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I, I meet interesting people and stories. On so Tuesday is my favorite day. So Tuesday, this miracle happened on a Tuesday. He sends a message and says, oh, there seems to be something I found for you because there's a radio which is switching from full English programming and they're going to introduce a certain per small percentage of, um, sorry, sw switching from Kenya Rwanda. They're going to introduce a certain percentage of English broadcasting and they're looking for a female presenter. I was like, oh, nice, good. So there we are. I tell you, he quickly asks me to send my papers. I send them. Then he says, and where I was, on the show I was, the radio, we were making a few changes. Because again, I had been there for 10 years, 10 years working with different sets of people. So then at, when, this, when the third host left, they said, maybe we need to try and bring in a new pair. Okay. So they're going to give us other roles. Mm -hmm. I was going to keep, I had a show that I love very much on Sunday. I was going to keep that, but I was also going to do, to head the public relations department. Then my co-host at the time was going to host the sports show. He's, sorry, sorry, the drive show, he's male. So then, so amidst those changes, this guy shows up and says, there's room for you in Kigali. And I had already thought about it. I had visited Kigali once. I had 
as a news anchor, as a media personality, my eyes were always on Kigali. Like I, it's like I, I knew Kigali before getting here. I would read a lot about it. I read a lot about the president, the development, the people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he says, oh, but before you make up your mind, I just would love you to take time and come visit so that you are sure that's what you want to do. I told him I'm already sure, but if you want me to make the visit, it's okay. So I make the visit and that was it. It was the end of my 10 years on a breakfast show in Kampala and at the beginning of a new one here. I landed on the first, I came by bus. Because mm -hmm. we, we, we did some things quite hurriedly. I couldn't even. So that bus trip, but I came straight from Nyawugogo and went on air. No. Oh, yes. The first same day. day. Same day. I, I arrived in the morning of first day of March. Talking about giving it your all. Do you understand? Oh, by the way, when it comes to work, work and Jackie, nothing stands in the way of it. I love that. Nothing stands in the way. I give it my all. Like, Someone has... Yeah, we'll go, go to the microphone. Yeah, we'll go, go, went home, showered, changed. Like, I just had a few minutes to change, mm -hmm. to shower, refresh. Yes. Went, freshen up. So I went home, changed, came to work straight, and went on air. Six o'clock on the 1st of March, 2018. Pause that thought. <laughs> I have nothing to say after this, but stay tuned to The Barber Show on EC World TV every Sunday, 7.30. PM. You can also follow us on YouTube, but we'll be right back after this break. And we, this is this is good. I'm enjoying myself. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Barbara Show. This is an inspirational talk show that airs every Sunday at 7.30 on Isibo TV and also on The Barbara Show on YouTube. You can see the links and everything just on your screen. We are here and this is our very first English episode. I have been excited because I'm introducing this episode to part of the package of what we will be giving you. And thank you for your support. Thank you for your subscribe. I mean, Subscribe if you've just stumbled on this, but subscribe. I appreciate your follow. I appreciate your likes. I appreciate your comments. So before we took a break, I had introduced our guest, Miss Jackie Lumbasi. She is a radio presenter for Royal FM for Kigali in the morning. And she's been telling us this journey in the media, how she came here. I mean, how does one move countries in search of opportunities? How do you leave Kenya to go to Rwanda looking for opportunities? How can Rwandans leave Rwanda and go to Kenya. S stay on this show and hear more from Jackie. So you come, go to the microphone and yep. start working. And the first song plays the second, did I even play the second one? I don't think we did because the, the log doesn't have a second song. So uh -huh. yeah, there we are. And I'm like, good morning, Kigali. And the show, my co-host was Arnold Quizera. Oh. The show started. And so unknown to me, I think this, I do not know how this um, eluded me, it just didn't occur to me how many people had been listening to me. Like, I forgot that there were very many Rwandans that were born and raised in Uganda. There are many that went there to study. So I did not know that I was actually speaking to some people that I had been speaking to for a while. So I go on air, we start the show, then messages start coming in. I'm like, God, look at what you're doing. Look, I'm a Christian, so I really attribute a lot to God. So I'm like, this is interesting. My first morning, look at all these people saying, hi, welcome. I used to listen to you. I'm so glad you're now in my home country. Like All these things. Wow. All these things. And you know, before I went on air, uh, so for that, because again, radio, as you keep saying, it's content. So mm -hmm. on the bus, I was busy reading. What, what happened yesterday? So that I am updated. Mm -hmm. And indeed, when I went on air, I wasn't that far, much behind. No. I love that. I don't think there are many. It's highly unlikely that anyone noticed I had just arrived. I love the, the drive and the, yeah. the giving it your best. Whatever Thank you. Yeah. you get an opportunity, you get your foot in the door and you give it your best. And let me tell you, it does not matter how small that opportunity is. That people think that you give your best when you are at the top. No. That's a lie. 
people don't get to the top just out of the blue. That's the other thing we forget. You start small, you start somewhere. That opportunity could be you sweeping someone's compound. It could be the reception work that It could we... be the reception work I did. Yes. You know, when I left that uh, radio station, I met my boss after maybe about three years. And he said, you know, we've never been able to have a Kiswahili bulletin. We haven't had another anchor as good as you are. But above all, we have not been able to replace you at the reception. Magical. That was it. So you can imagine. It meant I did something. But also that something that that man told me when we were still working together. He said, someone is always watching. Yeah. So whatever you do, give it your best. Because it's only your best that gets noticed. Oh, by the way, even your worst gets noticed. But you know what comes out of your worst? You get no recommendations. Nobody will, nobody will hear of an opportunity and, and say, think of you. Barbara, exactly. Yeah. Because they know this one sleeps on the job. Yeah. Even the last time I hooked them up with something, they let me down. But when you're someone who has proven yourself, when you've given your all, you've given your best, trust me, you can never go wrong with giving your best. Whatever opportunity you have, whatever, wherever you're starting, you can even start in an organization as a driver. But give it your give best. It, give be it the your best, best be driver. The, thank you. Be the best driver. You're cooking. Be the, the best, best cook. cook. Yeah. You know? I love that. When I came on radio, I said, God, and you've given me this opportunity. I will be the best anchor. Place me wherever you'll place me. He, then he made me an anchor. I did it well. Made me a presenter until, and it's by his grace, until today. I want to believe I've given it my all. For sure. Like, I know for sure I have never, ever given anything short of the best mm -hmm. and i see the results oh yes the results always come the results always come mm -hmm. i will meet people i like someone will say you said something when i was in high school i still remember wow what do you mean you know what do you mean because again I, I will strive to find that thing I, I, and remember what i told you i wanted to glorify god i wanted to impact people i want to i wanted to give them hope so even in my content i look mm -hmm. for something that will make us laugh but I will also look for something that will make us feel better about mm. ourselves. When someone sees me as a radio presenter in Kigali, they'll think, mm, this one must be the daughter of some very powerful person in Kenya. And I tell them, no. When I have the opportunity, I tell them, no, because there are also times you'll have that name, but it will not take you anywhere. Yeah. Because as an individual, you're not working as hard as the name, the person who used that name before you. Yes. That happens because there are others who think, oh, this one is successful because they are so and so's daughter, because they have this mm -hmm. sort of surname. Mm -hmm. That's just an excuse that we make. Mm -hmm. You, as an indiv individual with no name, make that name. I love that. So, what has been your experience here in Rwanda? Oh, well, you came, went to work straight away. But yes. What has been your overall experience, the good and the bad? The good and the bad, let me see. I'll start with the good. Yes. Um, beautiful, peaceful people. Peaceful in the sense that um, they might not talk, you know. <laughs> okay, maybe I don't know how much what they're thinking about me. But yeah, because they don't talk, <laughs> you don't know. It's peaceful. I will see the peace. Exactly, peaceful. it's peaceful. So peaceful, very um, quiet, mm -hmm. reserved, in a good way. At times, it could be a bad way, mm. by the way, because some opportunities will bypass you because you're just too reserved. Also, yeah, um, clean, very clean uh, place. I, I get agitated when I see people trash. The other day I was walking, I took a photo of, there's a small bottle of liquor that has become such a decoration mm -hmm. in the city lately. Mm. I won't say its name because they've not paid us to advertise them. Yes. But I see it around, so when I see, because when, when, this place is so clean that the temptation to litter, you cast the thought to litter, you know? <laughs> I so when I see mean. when I see something littered, so when I see some litter, when I see a bottle just thrown there, I get so angry. So that is um, amazing. Then the um, good. yes, that's really good. Um, the bad. Then, um, the All the challenges. <laughs> Let's call them the challenges. Not the bad. Eh? Not the bad. Let's call them the challenges. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, good people, peaceful people, um, very secure, very very safe. Like you don't have to to use chains to make sure you are safe in, in your a, house as you're going to sleep. Mm -hmm. You have no idea. That is something that we need to thank God for. I learned that we take a lot of things for granted and you're always looking on the outside for good. You will never know until you leave mm -hmm. this place. So we need to learn to, to take 
to be grateful. I mean, the small, small things that you think are the norm are not the norm. The fact that you're able to just talk on the phone and nothing. I remember in 2018 when someone snatched my phone and I talked about it. Like, it was, it, it doesn't happen. And even then, that was the only time that it happened. And, you know, you never know. One bad person among many. So it's very safe here. And this is also a land of opportunities, a lot of opportunities. That is something good. I have I a friend of I have a friend of mine who said this. She also moved from the UK actually. Mm. But he's Rwandan. Yeah. He's Rwandan. I'm not going to call out his name, but I know he'll know that I'm talking about him. Uh -huh. He he grew up in the UK, studied in the UK, and he moved back here. He's been here for two, three years now. And uh, he's so focused mm -hmm. when it comes to business. I mean, wow. I look at him and I'm like, I have so many lessons to take from you, sir. So I ask him, what do you think about Rwanda? And he tells me, Rwanda is a construction site. What do you want to build? Oh, you see? So we were talking about the barber show and he's like, yeah. this is a construction site. Exactly. You build your barber build show. Thank what you. else do you have in mind? So exactly. he's always pushing me to think of other products. And I'm like, yeah. slow down. You yeah. know the Rwandan in me? Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. It always comes up. Gahoro, gahoro. <laughs> Let's, you know, one step at a time. <laughs> we hang on. We hang on. We hang on. But we have so many opportunities. We yeah. just need to show up. That's it. That is it. When you see, why do you think a lot of people are coming? Why, why do you think a lot of Rwandans are coming back home? A lot of Kenyans, a lot of Ugandans, a lot of Tanzanians are coming here. It's because the opportunities are there. Yeah. So for you who is here, if you choose not to see, mm -hmm. that's your own problem. Because trust me, people will come and take them. Then you'll say, oh, this person has taken my job. What were you doing about getting that job in the first place? Did and you show up? Did you show up? Because the thing is about you showing up. And most of us Rwandans don't want to get our hands dirty. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't want that. So you'll say, ah, oh, that job. With our that. titles oh. and our good English. Oh, and your good English? No, you don't want that. Oops. Then you'll find the rest of us. You'll tell me even go wash cars and I'll go wash them. I do not mind at all. Hmm. So that is it. We, the opportunities are there. We've got to take them. The, the challenges. challenges. <laughs> we are not calling it the bad. The no, it challenges. Will be the challenges. Mm -hmm. I'll start with my work challenge, which mm -hmm. hosting an English breakfast show mm -hmm. is a fantastic thing. And for me, I think because I can, like, it's something I can do even without one single listener. I love it. Like, I love it. I will just come and talk. So that I do. But the biggest challenge is. First and foremost, getting people to come for that show, <laughs> interviews in the morning. Because mm -hmm. the, the, we've, we've scheduled it and segmented it in a way that our interviews come at 7. So you will not get... People are not that willing to come and be interviewed. And yet when I have a conversation with them off air, they're quite competent, very passionate about the topic. Then when I tell them to come and we discuss it on air, they do not want. And then there's this thing... So I said earlier that Rwandans are reserved, and that could be a good thing or a bad thing. So you find they're so reserved to the extent that, um, so Barbara has an opinion on this thing, mm -hmm. but because my aunt will judge me we, if yeah. they hear me talking about it on radio, I would rather not come for that. We are, so, we, we, we are prisoners of public opinion. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Exactly. We are prisoners of public opinion when yeah. it comes to good ideas, when it comes to, I mean, yeah. we, we are afraid of being judged yeah. that we end up not sharing the good stuff we have in us, I which is so scared yeah. because... We don't even want to mess up because you don't That's want... That's the thing. But you can't... And yet it's, it's for messing up that we find it, that we learn. So that's the thing. So someone will not come on air because uh, they do not want their relative who is listening to hear them. I, uh, someone will even send a message and they'll say, oh, don't mention my name. You know yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> say, don't mention my name. And this person who is telling you, don't mention my name. If I read their message, their opinion, the fact that they... Quite, they are quite influential in our society. Yes. If I mentioned their name, it would, would have, have it would have a, an impact. It, it would, would add weight. Thank you. It would add so much weight. It would have a proper proper conversation because this person is involved. But because this person does not want their name to Mention. be mentioned as I'm reading this opinion, that becomes the end of the conversation. Mm -hmm. But not all hope is lost. Mm -hmm. I am still very optimistic that we will get to that point where we will be able to express ourselves. I believe time will come when we will come on radio and talk about the issues that we want to talk about. Because it's from having these conversations that we grow, help each other as well. Yes. Yeah. Radio inspires people. It, yes. It, it, uh, we grew up listening to radio. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you moved to Rwanda and you've 
you've spent here three years. Three years, yes. I make three years on March 1st. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Um, where do you see this journey taking you? Oh, that's a good question. First and foremost, I have just arrived. Oh, yeah. let's, let's watch for Jackie. Let's watch this space for Miss Jackie Lumbasi. <laughs> I have just arrived. As <laughs> for where the journey will take me, I leave it to God. He knows best. He knows our destiny. I believe God engineered my Amen coming. That, yeah. And until the time he will feel like, oh, she's done. So for now, it's Royal FM. Yes. I'm giving it my all, Royal FM. I've already seen it grow in the last three years, and I see another three years of us just taking over, total takeover. Mm -hmm. And then you never know. Will I live ready? Will I... By the way, this journey is just leading me. I will go. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love that. <laughs> As we wrap up, yeah. what would you tell someone watching this show on YouTube in the diaspora and they are thinking of moving to Rwanda? Anyone looking for content and they yeah. fall on this episode and they're thinking of Rwanda, what would you tell them? Move. If you're thinking about it, move. Because for you, by you delaying the move, you're delaying the results. You never know. I remember my, during my early days here, I met a guy at an event. It was an art event. And so he asked me, oh, tell me a bit about yourself. I tell him. And then he says, you are a very strong person. You mean you moved? You know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, yes, I moved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about moving, mm -hmm. please come in. Because this place will receive you with open arms. Mm -hmm. And you cannot fail mm -hmm. to find something to do in this country. There's always something you can do. But also if you're a Rwandan, you're watching and you want to go. Yes. Because you know, you're talking about East African community. Yes. Who do you think is going to, which one is going to benefit from the East African community and its parks if it's not you? Mm -hmm. So you're the one to go. Mm -hmm. And enough of you just sending the children there to go study and come back. Mm -hmm. No. Go there. Take that opportunity. Take that job. You've been called. Don't say, oh, that's fine. I don't want to leave my people. I left mine. Did I die? There you have it. With that said, we are concluding this. I'm not adding anything. No, she done, didn't done, die. Done for the day. She didn't die. She left her people, came oh. to Rwanda, and she didn't die. No. So we're encouraging you to, to think big. Look at the opportunities we have around. Get your foot in the door. Give it your best. Thank you for watching The Barbara Show. See you on Sunday. I God always close you. by saying God bless you. God bless you. Rokozo Kurichira Ichigani wrote The Barbara Show. Nimbu chibonye kuri YouTube, The Barber Show, kwa subscribe, ujumbu kumeza kuona makuru, nivindi bigani robjin, shibi kumeza kuza, nimbu dukulichira kuri Facebook, nimbu dukulichira kuri Instagram, kumeza dukulichire, turakwishi mechane, no kuri Twitter, mzajamu kumeza kuona amakuru, ndetse ni muka sibe, kurebi chichigani ro kuisibo TV. Turawashimirero, kumanya wanyu mga duhaye, imana, iwa humujishi.